Hello grade 10, welcome. This week, you will learn about electromagnetic waves and in this video, you will learn about the nature of electromagnetic waves, how electromagnetic waves are produced and the proponents of electromagnetic wave theory. Tara! Our topic is anchored on the learning competency Compare the relative wavelength of different forms of electromagnetic waves. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to 1. Explain the nature of electromagnetic wave 2. Describe how electromagnetic wave is produced and propagated and number 3. Name significant proponents of the formulation of electromagnetic wave theory. Let's start with the nature of electromagnetic waves. As its name suggests, electromagnetic wave or EM wave is considered to be of both electric and magnetic in nature. In other words, an electromagnetic wave contains an electric field and a magnetic field. These fields are not made up of matter similar to what is in a football field. Instead, electric and magnetic fields are the regions through which the push or pull of charged particles and magnets is exerted. Charged particles and magnets can push or pull certain objects without even touching them. Now how are electromagnetic waves produced? Electromagnetic waves are produced by a charge that changes its direction or speed. Remember that electrons are charged particles that can produce electric and magnetic fields. But in order to create the vibrating electric and magnetic fields that are the characteristics of an electromagnetic wave, electrons must move. Exhilarating electrons produce electromagnetic waves. These waves are a combination of electric and magnetic fields. A charged particle such as an electron moves back and forth or vibrate. A changing magnetic field produces an electric field and in the same manner, a changing electric field produces a magnetic field. The blue arrow represents the magnetic field and the red arrow represents the electric field. An electromagnetic wave is made up of an electric field and a magnetic field positioned at right angles to each other and to the direction of motion of the wave. Since these fields are located at the right angles to the direction of motion of the wave, electromagnetic waves are considered as transverse wave. In a transverse wave, the direction of the wave energy moves into a right angle to the electric and magnetic fields. This means that both electric and magnetic fields oscillate perpendicular to each other and to the direction of the propagating wave. Just like other waves such as water waves and waves on a rope, electromagnetic waves carry energy from one place to another. But unlike other waves, electromagnetic waves do not carry energy by causing matter to vibrate. It is the electric and magnetic fields that vibrate. Electromagnetic waves can travel through a medium, but unlike other types of waves, they can also travel in vacuum. Light, for example, can be transmitted with a medium as through the atmosphere or even without a medium as through space. Electromagnetic waves travel in a vacuum at a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8th meter per second and denoted as C, the speed of light. The speed is slightly slower in air, glass, and any other material. To appreciate just how great this speed is, light from the sun travels 150 million kilometers to Earth in about 8 minutes. The wave speed, frequency, and wavelength are related by the following equation. C is equal to the product of wavelength and frequency, where C is the speed of light expressed in meters per second. The frequency, f, is expressed in hertz, and the wavelength, lambda, is expressed in meters. The wavelength of an EM wave is the length between two crests of the electric or magnetic field strength. Crest refers to the highest point of a wave, while thra is the lowest point of a wave. 
The frequency of a wave refers to the number of cycles or vibrations per one unit of time. Since all EM waves have the same speed which is equal to the speed of light, this means that as the wavelength decreases, the frequency of the wave increases. Because C is constant, an increase in wavelength means a decrease in frequency and vice versa. Electromagnetic waves are known to possess the following properties. 1. They are produced by accelerated or oscillating charge. 2. They do not require any material or medium for propagation. And number 3. They travel in free space at the speed of 3 times 10 raised to the 8th power meter per second. The following prominent scientists made a significant contribution in resolving how electromagnetic waves behave. Let's start with James Clerk Maxwell, an English scientist who developed a scientific theory to better explain electromagnetic waves. Maxwell used this field theory to assume that light was an electromagnetic wave and then correctly deduced the finite velocity of light. It was a powerful logical argument for the existence of the electromagnetic force field. He noticed that electric fields and magnetic fields can couple together to form electromagnetic waves. Maxwell discovered that a changing magnetic field will induce a changing electric field and vice versa. Heinrich Ertz, a German physicist, applied Maxwell's theories to the production and reception of radio waves. The unit of frequency of a radio wave one cycle per second is named Ertz in honor of him. He proved the existence of radio waves in the late 1880s. He used two rods that served as a receiver and a spark gap as the receiving antennae. Where the waves were picked up, a corresponding spark would jump. Ertz showed in his experiments that these signals possess all of the properties of electromagnetic waves. Next, we have Michael Faraday, best known for his discovery of electromagnetic induction. He was responsible for introducing the concept in physics which describes electromagnetic interaction. But perhaps, it is not so well known that he had also made fundamental contributions to the electromagnetic theory of light. Andre Marie Ampere made the revolutionary discovery that a wire carrying electric current can attract or repel another wire next to it that's also carrying electric current. The attraction is magnetic, but no magnets are necessary for the effect to be seen. He went on to formulate Ampere's law of electromagnetism and produce the best definition of electric current during his time. We also have Hans Christian Ørsted, a Danish physicist and chemist, who discovered that the electric current in a wire can deflect a magnetized compass needle, a phenomenon which was rapidly recognized and which inspired the development of electromagnetic theory. And that's all for this week. Thank you for watching.